for the small percentage of us that believe in something so much bigger than just running a successful business, I ask you, if everyone who had the problem that you solve got your help, would the world change? This is the conversation more of us should be having, the one that rarely is seen or talked about, and it's often buried under conversations about marketing, business growth, sales, revenue, all of it. Yet coincidentally, this is what actually drives those changes. So let's get real. Welcome to the Business Real Talk Podcast, where you'll learn straightforward and simple ways to scale your business and we're keeping it real. I'm your host, Naza Javaria, an 18-year marketing expert and the founder of Next Level Up CEO and the Easy Yes Method. I'm also a wife, a mom of three, and a real talk strategist. On the Business Real Talk Podcast, we'll dive into how you can disrupt your industry, create a pipeline of premium clients, and how to scale your revenue without scaling your time. If you're ready to dive straight into how you can use my easy yes method, I want to invite you to check out my free mini series that breaks down how you can replace all of your sales and marketing efforts with just one Netflix inspired client acquisition system that turns cold leads into raving fans in seven days. Go check it out at easyesleads.com. I want you to leave this podcast with business strategies that are straightforward and timeless. So let's get real. Now, hey, hey, and welcome back to the Business Real Talk. We have been having such incredible conversations in the last few episodes, and it has sparked so many comments from you, my amazing listeners, which is ultimately the intent behind the Business Real Talk podcast. And I wouldn't be keeping it real with you if I didn't talk about leading the change, creating a movement-making business strategy that changes the world. This is where my passion lies, the reason behind my business. Now, when I started this business of mine just 13 years ago, it was built with some big, scary purpose to change the world. Honestly, I couldn't even whisper those words 13 years ago because it felt so insane. How could I, a 27-year-old mom who was obsessed with psychology, innovation, and a background in marketing, change the world? And I'm willing to bet that if I had those thoughts, countless others have probably felt that too. This often quiet yearning, lurking feeling that you really want to do something big and you have this fire within you, a desire to change the world, live a life in a business of purpose. And sure, you may have this recognized passion that's lingering, but it's kind of a war between trying to figure it all out. What should you be doing? How should you be doing it? And are you even worthy of doing that thing that you believe in? Am I right? So this episode is for the world changers, whether that's a hidden unspoken desire or one that you wake up daily and try to bring the life. I want to have some mind shattering conversations with you around what it means to lead the change and create a movement making business strategy that changes the world. Now let's jump in and start by talking about what I believe to be the phases of epiphany. Now, whether you're in this now or you're looking towards that direction, I really believe that there's a phase in the epiphany that happens when we come to this realization that we want to create this true world-changing domination of what we do. And for me, this happened in two phases. The first phase was when my first daughter was born. 13 years ago, I remember sitting there in my office. I was in a career and a job that I loved, one that took me around the world, one that kept me busy in marketing. And it felt like everything was right in the world. I vividly remember that when I was pregnant, I said I would never be the woman who left my job just because I had kids because I loved what I did so much. But it was with the birth of my first daughter where it felt like something shifted, something changed and something awakened within me that made me realize that the purpose I had was so much more, so much bigger than simply the job I had, even though I had had created established success, gotten to a certain point where I felt really proud at that age, I acknowledged the fact that there was something so much bigger that was kind of born in me when my first daughter was born. That to me was the first phase, that first epiphany that occurred that didn't necessarily drive me to this idea that I could change the world, but it kind of ignited it. It sparked this opportunity and this, this idea that there was something bigger beyond me. And it wasn't until my third kid, my youngest daughter was born where everything shifted and it kind of like put everything to accelerating. It made everything move so much faster. 
And the reasoning behind that one was because whether you've heard the story or not, my youngest daughter almost died. Um, at four days old, I had taken her to every doctor and every hospital I could find because I knew something was wrong and everyone turned me away and said that she was fine and I just needed to, to get some sleep uh, as a new mom. And I literally fought tooth and nail for me to be heard, to follow the in intuition that I had that ultimately led us to understand that she had been fighting for her life because she was fighting um, group B meningitis that led to a stroke and years and years of what we have now been able to undertake and create a miracle child. But ultimately, that was one of my epiphany moments. And I truly believe that oftentimes those epiphany happens in some of the worst moments, right? The first one was just having this new breakthrough in a life that was brand new to me and having my first child where I feel like a new version of me was born. And the second of that was ultimately when my daughter nearly died and, and I saved her life in being able to acknowledge something within me that was sitting there unspoken, unrecognized, unacknowledged and realizing that that moment turned on the fire for me. Now, I don't know that we always recognize that. And I think that's the first thing I wanna talk to you guys about is that so often, there are those hints, there are those things that kind of are there giving us signs and signals, and we don't always recognize them. And when we don't recognize them, we pass them off as just something that happened. But I think that so often, when we look at true world changing moments in our lives, in the things that happen around us, they came from a moment that in that in that moment in the driving force of what happened doesn't always make sense. And I tell people that like you have an unrecognized moment of epiphany that happens that you either are going to silence or you're going to leverage. And I'm a huge believer in listening to those pings because there is something that happens in all of us. And one of the big questions I've mentioned here before is that the question I ask to people when we got on a call together is I'll ask them, what drove you? Why is this something you're passionate about? That's important because when it comes to changing the world, passion isn't sparked from, I just wanted to make a lot of money, or I just thought about being an entrepreneur seemed fun, or you know any of those things that we oftentimes see on social media, which there's nothing negative about that. It's not to say that it's not okay for you to start a business based on those beliefs. It's amazing. It's just not the same as those who want to change the world. They either experience something in their own lives that created that epiphany, similar to what I shared with you, or they saw others struggle that what those people had experienced and said, why is there not another way to this? We naturally gravitate towards opportunity, towards gaps, things that we see as why are we not shifting this? So it comes from this space of acknowledging that it's not a natural skill set. You don't have to be born into it. You don't have to be like this super talented person who has 20 years of marketing experience, right? That's not a requirement for you to be able to leave your mark. Ultimately, it's about understanding and acknowledging from the very beginning what you want to change. What change do you want to see in the world? Is it Something as simple as, you know, I'm tired of watching kids play video games too much, or is it something as complicated or complex as I don't want to see people suffer with health problems, whatever that is, what is it that is that driving force? So often I see people who are running a business who got into the business with a purpose, you know, maybe that was that they wanted to create a, a successful life, but they also came in with this purpose of, I just really feel driven that I can achieve this with this passion I have. Like for me, again, that was marketing. Who would say that marketing could change the world? Because from a top level, we don't see it that way. Who is to say that accounting could change the world? Who's to say that, you know, being a lawyer can change the world? We think of it as like doctors and nurses and, you know, these people who hold our lives in their hands are the ones who change the world. But who's to say that the things that you do, the service that you bring, the desires and passions that you have can't ignite that same change. So I want to ask that question that I asked at the beginning one more time. I want to ask you if everyone who had the problem that you solve got your help, would the world change? If you look at it from that perspective, from that lens, I guarantee you'd say, well, yeah, I guess so, Nas. I, I do think that if everyone who was struggling to create copy that would share their message 
got my support, got my help. Yeah, I do believe it would change the world. And yeah, Nas, I do believe that if all the women in the world who were struggling to really live their worth and not feel tied to their body image and felt confident in their skin right now, if they got the help from me, that yes, that would change the world. That to me is the very first premise of creating a legacy business that actually can lead a change, that can create a movement that allows you to actually change the world. And I think so often we've become so small-minded in the idea that things like marketing and copy and health and nutrition and legal and accounting can actually be life-changing, can be world-changing. But we think too small. We don't see the capacity of what our work can do beyond the singular outcome we create. When I help my clients with marketing, it isn't just marketing. It's about giving people the ability to understand their innovation, bring about change and create a message that creates a movement. That is the high value problems that we're solving. We talked about this last week, but I cannot say this enough. Really being able to leave your mark starts with understanding what is the high value problem that we are solving. I am not just helping with marketing. I'm helping you redefine and innovate your industry. I'm helping you create a message that sparks a movement. That is the gravity of the work that I am creating. So it starts with you. It starts with you understanding and identifying what is that spark that changes the world. And it brings me back to, I actually did a client spotlight just a couple of weeks ago with my incredible client, Kiara, who when we first got on a call, I vividly remember her saying to me, Nas, what if I don't have anything innovative? What if there's nothing innovative about what I do? And I'm, I can guess that if she asked me that question, how many others have that same belief? How many other people think to themselves, I'm not sure that I'm doing anything innovative at all. I'm not sure if I have the capability of being able to spark a change in, in the world. What if I can't? What if I'm not doing anything that powerful enough? I mean, that's a tough question to think about, but what I want to I want to say to you is if you're thinking about that, if that is on your mind, that already signals to me that you are a game changer. But it's a huge thing that I want you to sit with and ask yourself that question that we've already said. I'm going to repeat it over and over again. If everyone who had the problem you solved got your help, would that change the world? That's question number one. Number two is, are your clients transforming? Is there change in what they're doing? If the answer to that is yes, you are already on the road to creating innovation because it starts with you understanding a transformational and pivotal moment. Now, when I tell people that it's important why I get on calls with my clients is because I will tell my clients outright, a potential client, I will say to you, yes, I believe you have something innovative. I can see it for you before you can see it for yourself because we are far too close to our own genius to be able to recognize it. So, so often those who aren't sure of that, I ask them, I say, get on a call with me. Let's chat. Let's see if I can identify that genius for you. Within five to 10 minutes on a call, I can tell people immediately, this is what you should be speaking about. This is the missing piece. This is the gap in the market. That is my gift, right? That is my ability. And yes, we have a, a way that we support our clients in doing that through a process and system that we built. But ultimately that started with me me being able to recognize that. And oftentimes, like I said, we can't do that. So having a board of directors, having people who keep it real and fresh for you is a starting point of understanding that, but it's also the conviction that you bring to the table, right? Have you seen something happening in your industry, in your world, in people around you that you said enough is enough and wanted to change? Then that's the spark that's going to drive your ability to leave your mark and understanding that innovation. So ultimately, the first step in the process of really leading a change and creating a movement making business is understanding that untapped genius is understanding that innovation that lies at the heart of everything. Like I have conversations with people all the time. And one of the biggest things I say to them is the reason we start with innovative gap methodology isn't just a business strategy. That sounds great, right? It sounds really good that it's a business strategy that we do. And it is an engineered approach to doing that. But ultimately, it's that that understanding of your innovative methodology, that understanding of your deep rooted beliefs, your ability to change the world, your um, the things that you do that truly create transformation 
are the key that unlocks everything else. So your marketing, your messaging, your sales process, your delivery even is going to be directly correlated to the change that you bring to the world. And of course, that's gonna start with your methodology because your methodology is bringing together all that untapped genius. It is bringing together all the gaps in the market, the spaces, the unrecognized opportunity that maybe you were already solving or maybe you now see as a new opportunity to solve. So understanding that and identifying that spark of what you bring to the table is ultimately the first step in changing the world. So what I want you to walk away with, with the first thing that we talked about is really ultimately understanding what is your spark? That spark starts with what is my intention? What is my passion? What is my reasoning that drives me to creating this change? Why do I wake up every morning and do the impossible, do the difficult thing that most people wouldn't do? Why does this matter? Now, the side effect, the benefit of this is that not only is that going to be a huge major part of the business strategy that allows you to create that movement, but ultimately it's also going to drive your motivation. Because let me tell you, being an innovator, doing something that is truly leading a change is not for the weak at heart. It's not for those who are like, I only want this if it's going to be easy. I only want it if I'm making a ton of money from day one. I only want this if I can put the least amount of effort and create the biggest amount of results. That is not what this is going to do because that is not what world changers are after. So I can say with complete confidence that those of you who are listening here are not after the idea of, I just want to make a quick buck. Sure. Making a ton of money is an amazing side effect of creating a spark that changes the world. But ultimately that is not what you're after. You're after this bigger idea of change changing the world, right? Living a life of purpose, bringing your God-given gifts to the world, doing the things that are so much bigger than you because you know that there is so much more that we aren't even seeing. And I want you to think to yourself because I think it becomes so easy for us to tell ourselves that it's too small, that we're too small to bring about that change. They to think of Jeff Bezos. Imagine if he had sat in his garage and said to himself, gosh, Jeff, all you're doing is creating an online bookstore. That's not that big of a deal, right? Think of these big game changers that we see like Steve Jobs and then thinking, gosh, all you're doing is creating a smartphone. It's not a big deal. Imagine if they had thought that small of what they were doing and and looked at it from such a one-dimensional standpoint, how different our world right now would look like. Or Elon Musk, right? Regardless of whether we like these people or not, they had the conviction, the audacity to see something beyond the one-dimensional approach that we often are. So I want to ask you to see beyond that and say, what if it wasn't just I'm just doing marketing? What if it wasn't just, I'm just doing accounting? What if it wasn't just, I'm just creating copy, right? What if it was something so much bigger that came from the change that you evoke from the gifts that you were given? That is the first piece. So now that we understand what it means to start by understanding your spark that changes the world, Let's talk about the second piece of the puzzle because bringing about that change is probably the hardest part of the puzzle is allowing yourself to recognize that bringing about massive change, empowering this change in the market is about creating buy-in. There's no other way to say it. I'm not even talking about it from the marketing lens. I'm talking about people buying into your belief, okay? People believing in the same thing you believe in is buy-in. Yes, in a marketing standpoint, buy-in is leads raising their hands, right? There's the tangible side of things, but the intangible thing of it is this people understanding and saying, I agree with this. This makes sense. I understand this. Validating that idea and that change. Now, what I really want to be careful of when we talk about this is validation doesn't always look the way that we want. So we don't mean validation as like, you should keep going. Oh my gosh, this is the best idea. We're not always going to see that, right? But what we do mean by validation is that there's an understanding, an aha moment, a click that happens for people when we're bringing that change into the market. Now, that's where I talk to you guys about the tangibility of what that means is connecting the dots for people, right? You know what this market needs. You know what the world needs to be changed. 
Now that's amazing. That's incredible, right? That in and of itself is a, a masterpiece, a work of art. But what really creates that masterpiece to a point where someone else can see it too, is not just looking at a painting and saying, gosh, that's beautiful. And somebody else not being able to see the beauty in it. It's how can we captivate the audience, the people that we're talking to, so they can also see the beauty in that masterpiece. That is where we bring about that change. So in our world, when we talk about getting people to make a decision, being able to get them into a space where they create, buy into what you're doing, that's the power behind bringing that change to the market because you can have a really incredible, amazing idea, a huge vision, even a life-changing approach. But ultimately, if you cannot bring that vision to the world and create buy-in, whether it's on a one-to-one -one scale or a one-to-many, like I don't mean the offer, I just mean like more people buying into that, then it's always going to remain a small opportunity. And I'm not talking about changing the world means, gosh, you have to be able to get everyone to like you. That's the opposite of what we're saying. But what I am saying here is that creating buy-in means they understand it. They can see it. They can visualize it. They can look at the masterpiece and say, I, I'm alongside you. I see what's happening here, okay? Most of us can't do this because we cannot articulate it. And it starts with number one, right? It starts with not knowing for ourselves what that looks like. And that is the most frustrating part of innovation, of changing the world, of creating a movement is it's unrecognized genius. And that's the inability to be able to acknowledge for ourselves what we do. We just know we do things. So once we've established that and we know what that is, and that's why we do that through methodology is because methodology makes it tangible. It makes us feel, see, approach it, being able to say, this is what I do. Not just I do something amazing. Come trust me, come see. That doesn't bring about buy-in in the mass market. The ability to create mass market change is getting people to see the vision that you've created. Methodology is the approach that achieves that. Once we've achieved that, now it's how do we bring that to people and allow them to see it on a bigger scale, okay? When we talk about understanding the power behind compounding decisions and why really understanding the decision pathway becomes priority number two after the methodology is ultimately because that's what we're doing. Being able to help people make a decision, whether that decision is, yes, I'm buying into what you're saying. No, I'm not buying into what you're saying is a skill set that we all have. Because once we understand that unrecognized genius, it's how do we get others to understand it with us? That is honestly being able to compound a decision, being able to help people understand the information that drives a decision. Most of you aren't doing that, right? Most of us in our market can't help people drive a decision because we either don't know what people need or we haven't acknowledged how to give them what they do need, okay? So let's talk about that in a more tangible way. You want to create a massive change in the market. You want to create a movement to what you're doing. Okay, great. What is it that people need to understand? That starts with what belief is current, what is the current belief state they are in? From there, that is the very first step of us acknowledging the belief that we need to now shift. Most of you have no idea what the current belief in your market is, right? Most of you don't know what people are saying or what people are thinking. So I'll give you an example. In my world, in client acquisition, people believe that sales is priority number one. That is one belief that I am shifting, that sales is only as powerful as the ability to be able to leverage marketing to pre-sell our audience prior to doing that. That is one belief shift that I am making. So I have a series of starting beliefs that people are at right now that I need to shift within my market. That is where I am able to take the current state and move them to the state of being able to see and empowering a change within the market through creating buy-in of what I'm doing. So what I would say to you is make a list. Ask yourself, what are the current beliefs in the market that need shifting? That is ultimately going to drive your ability to be able to help people accelerate decisions, help people move to the state of, yes, this makes sense. Oh my gosh, I haven't seen it all along. What you're doing is absolutely going to uh, create a infill for a gap in the market because you understand the current belief and you understand where you need them to be. And now the goal of what you're doing and how you speak to what you're doing is ultimately just shifting from the starting belief to the ending belief. 
So I want you to ask yourself those two questions. What is the starting belief or beliefs? And honestly, there are multiple beliefs that are in your market. What are the starting beliefs? And just start with one to three beliefs. What's the starting beliefs in my market that are currently there that I'm going to need to change, that I'm going to need to empower to create change within that? Make a list of the starting ones and make a list of the ending ones. What do you want their ending belief to be based on this new version of change, the change that you are bringing into the market? So that is the second step in this process of how we actually create the buy-in that empowers and brings about change within the market and allows you to bring that vision to people so that they can see it with you. So let's move into the third piece of the puzzle, which is ultimately affecting a movement beyond your four walls, okay? The reality is there is only so much that we can do. And that may feel limiting, but it's absolutely not when you understand the power behind it. So our capability of what we can do is only what's within our own four walls, right? Right. What we can say is only what can be said to our small market. And that's great. And it, it can create a small movement. But ultimately, if you think about it, creating a mass movement, creating change that truly creates global change in the world starts with you understanding how to create a movement beyond your own four walls. Now, here's the concepts that I think don't get talked about. And I have a lot of great conversations with colleagues where um, I, I've shared this, this intent and my feelings behind this, but it's this is where it's about the change and transformation you're creating. If you are someone who wants to change the world, you do not, you did not start this business to become a marketer. You did not start this business to become an excellent salesperson. You probably feel really freaking frustrated by the amount of time, effort, and energy and resources you have to put into the things that aren't what you started this business for in the first place. Okay. If that's you, I, I can probably see you shaking your head right now being like, yep, Nas, nice, that's me. Cause I've had countless conversations with hundreds of business owners across the globe who said those exact words to me. I am sick and tired of becoming a marketer. And that is not the goal, right? The goal has always been, how can you bring about transformational change beyond where you are right now? Now, what I want you to really, really acknowledge for that is there is only so much change you can bring about in a small capacity. This does not mean that we're talking about, oh, go start a membership, go create more stuff, go sell these low ticket offers. Completely the opposite of what I'm about to tell you. But what I am going to tell you is your capability of being able to affect change on a scalable level does matter. So what I mean by that is I, I tell this in a jokingly and lovingly matter to people that if you have the ability to change the world and you're only changing one life at a time, you're an asshole. And I don't mean that like you're only working with clients one-to-one. -one. I just mean like you're limiting your ability to be able to change the world because of your inability to see past what feels comfortable to you. That sounds mean, but the reality is if you have a gift that can change millions, if not billions of lives, and you're limiting yourself to the ability to say, I can only do it in this capacity, then you are limiting the amount of change that you can bring about, okay? Imagine having a, a life-changing drug that you were like, but I can only give it to one person at a time. I can only help one person take this at a time. I'm unwilling to see this as an opportunity to change more people. Now, how do we do that? How do we create and acknowledge the fact that transformation can be very personal, very integrated, that it isn't something that's just, I want to work with hundreds of thousands of people. That's not what we're saying. We're saying, how can we create a movement beyond your four walls? So here's what we mean by that. Let's say you are working with your clients to one-to-one -one and you're like, Nas, listen, my work works best when I worked with my clients one-to-one. -one. Amazing. Awesome. I love it. We don't have to change that. If that's what you want to do, amazing. There's no right or wrong way to do it. But what does happen is I don't want it to be that now because of that, you have to become a master marketer and you're only working with clients one-to-one. -one. Gosh, you're only going to be stretched so thin before you feel like it's burning you out. So our opportunity now becomes how can we create empowered salespeople out of your incredible clients. That's one possibility, right? The possibilities are truly endless when we look at this. But let's say one possibility is you evoke such an incredible transformation in your clients that now they go sell for you. So your time is no longer spent on marketing. That frees up a whole lot more opportunity for you to serve even more clients because now you're not spending that time that shouldn't be spent on marketing. You're now spending it on clients because your clients are now selling for you. That's opportunity number one. 
Opportunity number two becomes, okay, great. You know that your work works best when you're working one-to-one -one with clients. That sounds amazing. But what if we said that now that we understand that what you do works best one-to-one, -one, but does it always have to be you that's doing it one-to-one? -one? What does that mean? That means what if instead you created a certification program where you empowered and, and certified others in your methodology that is world changing so they can go bring about that change as well, even if it's still one-to-one, -one, because now what it's allowing you to be able to do is expand, expand the change that you're making in the world beyond you and your four walls. The possibilities become endless when we can see that opportunity. It doesn't have to look one singular way. Yes, you can productize your methodology, your genius into a one-to-many program. And I guarantee you can, even if you're working one-to-one -one with clients, but you also can take your methodology and empower others to do the same thing across the globe. You can create a legacy far beyond you in that sense, right? You can also remove yourself out of the marketing and sales process by creating life-changing results so that those people become your most natural salespeople. So many ways, but really understand that that movement is going to happen beyond your own four walls, beyond what your small world is capable of doing. That is the opportunity where we create endless options for how we can create that movement. But ultimately, like we said, it starts with you and understanding and sparking a change in the world based on your change. What is it that you bring in, right? Number two is creating buy-in. How can you get others to buy into the vision that you've created? How can you help them see the masterpiece? that you've created. And that is ultimately, like, like we said, being able to understand the decision-making, the, the support and what you're trying to get people to believe in. And number three is ultimately seeing the opportunities beyond your four walls. What is it? How can we get others to share and expand our message beyond what we are capable of doing? Because guess what? You are one person who can shout from the rooftops and, and speak to a hundred people. But if you can inspire so much power behind what your work does, that those 100 people go tell 10 people and those 10 people go tell 10 more, it expands way beyond you. That is where creating a movement starts. And that starts from the creative ability to be able to see past the singular way that business is done and understanding the ability to exponentialize that growth in so many different ways. This is the power behind the EZS method. This is why I'm so freaking passionate about this is we start with leaving your mark. We understand that your way to be able to leave your mark is to win the market, to create a market of your own. Innovative gap methodology isn't just a marketing idea. It's a innovation strategy of how you take over the market, how you redefine change within your market and spark that change that really does change the world. I've said change so many times in one sentence. But ultimately, it starts with that. So our innovative gap methodology is that starting place of being able to, one, acknowledge and identify your unrecognized genius, bring that to life within a methodology that can now be articulated and seen by the world. This step alone, my clients change their lives and their business. I cannot say this enough. It changes their lives and their business because their ability to see the opportunity beyond what's happening here and see the world changing opportunities starts with that. And it also creates the tangible changes of being able to charge five to 10 times more, creating inbound demand, people running to work with them because they're saying, oh my gosh, you are doing something that nobody else can effectively starting and sparking the movement that they've always wanted. The second step in that process is ultimately how can we bring our vision to life and get global buy-in. We do this through our bingeable decision systems. This is literally built into the concept of how can we help people make and accelerate those decisions without us needing to do all the heavy lifting. Because right now, if you're trying to change decisions on a one-to-one -one capacity, there's only so much you can do. There's only so far that can go. Having a bingeable decision system is ultimately what allows you to get people to make and come to those decisions, accelerate the ability to move from their current belief state to their future belief state of what changes the world and changes your market through a bingeable sales system. We do this through a two-lane sales highway, which starts with our bingeable sales system, allows people to binge their way to a yes so that working with you becomes the only logical solution and buying into your methodology becomes something so readily and understood that 
that they can shout it from the rooftops as well. And the third step is ultimately how can you create the opportunity to move beyond your own four walls? We do this through results and retention, which creates pure profit in your business. Ultimately, this is about how can you create life-changing results for your clients at scale without losing the power behind what you do? This is how we actually leverage what we call proactive programming to help your clients gain the incredible, amazing results at scale without always being dependent upon you. That can look like, like we said, certification programs, one-to-many offers, productizing, creating opportunities to license and bring your, your beliefs and what you do to a massive market so it can move beyond your four walls. This is the power behind the EZS method. And I cannot say this enough, but I want for you to be able to change the world the way that you've believed in, the way that you saw for your life when you started this business. So as always, I want to invite you to the next steps. If you've listened to this episode and sparked something inside of you and you said, gosh, this is what I want. This is exactly what I've needed. I want to invite you to a growth optimization call directly with me. On this call, you and I will sit down. We'll talk about what your current process looks like. I'll help you understand where your innovation lies within that process. And I'll show you how we can apply the EZS method within your business so you can create a life-changing, world-changing business that allows you to turn your message into a movement and get leads to sell themselves. If you're ready to book that call, head on over to EZS Leads dot com backslash call so you can book this call directly with me if you are new to this world and in my world thank you for being here i'm so excited to have you i want to invite you to check out our free bingeable mini series that breaks down how our netflix effect gets leads to sell themselves using this three-step system you can check out the bingeable mini series now at ecsleads.com but I just want to leave you with that thought of really being able to ask yourself today what change you're bringing about the world. I'd love if you'd send me a message on your favorite platform to let me know your biggest takeaways from this episode specifically. And as always, you know, we love and appreciate if you help us turn this message into a movement so we can create a legacy of world changers and game changers who are leading the forefront of innovation and shaking things up in the industry. So if you can take a quick moment to share this episode with a friend who you think this might be beneficial for or on your social media platforms, or if you just take a quick minute to rate and subscribe to the episode on your favorite listening platform. But until next time, here's to keeping it real. Thank you so much for joining me on this episode of the Business Real Talk podcast. If you're serious about accelerating your growth, doubling or tripling your revenue and going from the best kept secret to the only and incomparable solution in your industry, then be the first to listen to each episode by hitting subscribe and sharing with a friend. Be sure to follow me on Facebook and Instagram at Next Level Up CEO to learn more about how you can declutter your marketing and leverage the easy yes method in your business to focus on results and create a truly scalable and sustainable business that does doesn't suck up all of your time. To get a sneak peek at my proprietary methodology that has allowed my clients to double or triple their revenue, go check out my free mini series that shows you exactly how you can replace all of your sales and marketing efforts with just one organic and evergreen client acquisition system that brings in premium clients on repeat. Go to easyyesleads.com to access the mini series now. And as always, stay tuned for next week's episode on the Business Real Talk. Until then, keep it real.